guys, if you're planning on traveling soon with your wiggly, energetic, crawling baby who seems to put everything in their mouths, this video is for you. I'm gonna give you nine essential tips based on my 30-ish flights with my own baby son that will help you get through your travel day, make it less stressful for both you and your baby. The most important things you're gonna need to pack are a sense of humor and a big old bottle of chill pills, and take a deep breath because everything's gonna be okay. My name is Brittany. If this video helps you out, please remember to like it down below. And let's go ahead and roll right into the first tip, number one, which is to dress your crawling baby for comfort and ease. What I found is there actually is a perfect airplane outfit that is really well thought out. So essentially, if you have a crawling baby, you're going to want to dress them in a onesie, full coverage onesie that covers their arms and their legs, is a zipper, not snaps, not buttons. You want to be able to have easy access for diaper changes. Make sure the material is not some kind of synthetic fabric like polyester, you want something comfortable and breathable. So cotton, linen, jersey, bamboo to help regulate the baby's temperature in those weird uh, you never know if it's too hot or too cold airplane situations. For a crawling baby, I prefer footed onesies, so you don't have to worry about them losing any kind of separates like socks or booties. I would personally avoid separates altogether. You don't want to have like separate tops and pants. A crawling baby is also so wiggly, and especially if your baby is going to be sitting on your lap most of the flight and doing somersaults on top of you, you don't want to have to worry about separates. A onesie is just so much easier. Footed PJs and you're done. Keep it simple. Don't forget to pack at least two extra outfits for your baby and an extra outfit for yourself just in case you get spit up on or you are victim to a poop explosion or anything like that. Tip number two, carry easily accessible in your carry-on or your diaper bag wipes, sanitizer, hand sanitizer, and what I like to call a dirty blanket, a blanket that you don't mind getting dirty and sort of serves the sole purpose of getting dirty at the airport and on the airplane. So the wipes and the sanitizer are for just wiping down areas like your airplane seat and seats at the airport, anything your baby's gonna be touching throughout your travel day. We personally pretty much just like let our son touch whatever he wants at the airport and the airplane and just make sure and sanitize his hands afterward. I know every parent is different, but we found that it's just a lot less stressful if we just kind of let him, let him explore the airport a little bit. We have a much better experience during our travel day if we do this. And of course, just wipe his hands afterward. The dirty blanket we've laid down when we've had the bulkhead row on, a, on an airplane, that sort of bigger row, we would Put the we'll put the blanket down on the floor and when he was crawling he would just sort of have his own little crawling area on the floor there the dirty blanket which we use like a thin muslin sort of blanket we would also put it down at the airport like when we were just kind of chilling waiting for our flight and he wasn't in direct contact as much with the airport floor tip number three pack toy leashes AKA pacifier leashes, so little leashes, <laughs> uh, little strings that connect your baby's toys to them or to the seats. These are really useful because otherwise your baby's toys and even grosser pacifiers will fall onto the floor on the airplane and you'll be kind of like looking under your seat, asking the person behind you and in front of you to get them back. If you just attach everything to a string and kind of like snap them on yourself, on your baby, fewer things will be falling on the floor and grossing you out. And you'll also lose fewer items this way. My fourth tip is to let your baby crawl out their energy as much as possible pre-flight. So as soon as you get to your gate, whether you're carrying your baby or your baby's in the stroller, get them out, get them on the floor, let them roam around. An important caveat here is to not let your baby play with any of the toys or feed them any of the special airplane snacks that you've packed. Keep all of your special airplane snacks and toys for the airplane so that they're more, they're more of a surprise, they're more of a novelty once you get on the plane. At the airport, use all that the airport has to offer. Use the airport gate seats. Use the, the people around you at the airport to entertain your baby. Use what the airport has so that you can keep whatever you're keeping for the plane separate and special to entertain your baby once you get on the airplane. Which brings me to tip number five, which is of course to pack plenty of entertainment for your baby for the flight. Even if you feel like you don't need it, 
you want to have it on hand just in case. When my son was in the crawling stage, I would go to a dollar store and I would buy all kinds of cheap little trinkets and things. Sometimes I wrapped them for the plane and I always, always kept them a surprise at the bottom of the diaper bag so that he wouldn't see them until I absolutely wanted him to have them. You don't wanna bring any favorite toys, you don't wanna bring anything expensive because often on an airplane, things can get lost in the nooks and crannies. So make sure it's nothing that's really important to you or to your baby. I've heard some parents say that they don't like to pack a whole bunch of crap that takes up space but for me for my son personally it was always worth it to have all kinds of random dollar store items with us in our carry-on you might find that your crawling baby is most interested in things like the safety card in front of him or the seat belt and that's fine I think I think it's fine to let him play with these items as well whatever works whatever gets your baby and you through the flight tip number six pack your snacks lots of different snacks, a variety of snacks in interesting containers. Things like snack catchers, or we have this thing, it's sort of like you can put the snacks in and it rotates. It's just kind of like fun to eat out of. We've used monthly pill boxes, Tupperware containers, you name it. Just a variety of different containers that are kind of fun to snack out of will do. As far as the actual snacks themselves, you know what your baby likes best. I would suggest bringing a mixture of novelty snacks that will be new for them that they've never tried before and snacks that you know that they like you know they will eat dry snacks of any kind things that get tend to get a little bit messy and maybe aren't a great idea are things like yogurt that you have to eat with a spoon or fruit that can be super super messy I understand if you have a long flight you, you probably will want to bring some kind of fruit but maybe not something that could get super messy where you're gonna have to use those extra outfits sooner than you'd like my son is awake now and will be joining us for the duration of this video my seventh tip is less of a tip and more of something that you must do and that is to arrive one hour earlier than you normally would to the airport so if you would normally arrive three hours early to an international flight I would recommend you arrive four hours earlier this has saved our butts several times at the airport a couple of times when there was something wrong with our son's ticket and we spent forever at the ticket counter and we really needed every minute of those that extra hour and sure you do need to use some of that extra time for things like feedings and changing diapers but I would say most importantly you need that extra time for play for crawling time when you think about it your baby's in a car seat they go from the car to the check-in to security to the gate it's a lot of constrained time in a stroller or in a baby carrier or in your arms and they really need some time to play and explore before you get on the airplane so arrive earlier to the airport just so they have that time to get some of the wiggles out. Tip number eight is to choose your seat on the airplane carefully when traveling with a crawling baby. There is no perfect airplane seat or no perfect place to sit on the airplane with a baby, but there are a lot of strong opinions about this and it's really gonna depend on your personality. I did a survey on a number of traveling moms asking them what where they prefer to sit, the window seat or the aisle, the front of the plane or the back of the plane, and I made a video on the results of that. So check that out if you're interested. For me personally, I like the window seat. I've just always liked the window seat and I still prefer it with a lap baby. Even a crawling baby, I just like the option of having the window for the baby to, for my, the baby, for my baby to look out of. It's extra entertainment. I think the bulkhead row towards the front of the plane is great because you get a lot of extra room for your baby to crawl around in, but I also think the back of the plane is great because you have fewer eyes on you if your baby is having a bit of a meltdown. And the final thing I'll say for today, number nine, is to stay calm, collected, and in tune with your baby's needs. <laughs> your baby can sense your mood. Your baby somehow magically knows when you're stressed out and absorbs your stress. Try to sort of trick yourself into thinking this is a fun travel adventure because it is. Everything's gonna be fine. The worst that can happen is your baby screams for the entire flight and it sucks, but it's not life and death. You will survive it. Tomorrow is another day. It's gonna be fine. If you've already done this, if you've already traveled with a crawling baby, what are your best tips? Let us know in the comments down below below.